the Lilith currently in the back seat of a car, stake through the heart in torpor, eyes closed, unconscious. Zeta is behind the wheel. Alice is in the front seat. In the back is the salubri, Raoul. So, this being a new session, and with both Zeta and Alice once again near the intoxicating scent of a salubri's blood, they must roll their willpower to hold back their beast. So that is where we will start with rolls from both of you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got three successes. Three successes? Yes. Uh, same. Mm. So, it may become clear to some of you why the youngest kindred were chosen to go after the salubri. For Zeta, three is enough for you to fight back the voice of the beast. For Alice, it is not. Oof. Alice, your hunger will go up by one. Okay. Zeta, yours will not. First, okay. I will deal with Zeta's beast. Are you sure? He's so tasty. We could have him right now. I think Alice would help you. Come on. Please. I'm sure. We promise Mandy and I will himself that we will not harm him. And we will not. Fine. We better have a big meal after this, though. Later we can feed, yes, but not on our own. Alice, your beast mm -hmm. starts to bring out the worst in you. You can feel something coming over you. Frustration. Your perspective begins to shift and the cold touch of sadness enters your mind. You know... Oh boy. This, Alice, is why we feed. Imagine. Doesn't he look like someone times before the ones who sneered laughed cheered at your movement and all the people that wanted their rights and all the people that just wanted to be equals yeah I think a taste of his blood might be able to answer whether he's worth sparing or not I, um, I wouldn't want to do that to my friends, right? Your friends would want you to eat. They'd want you to live life happily. Look at you. Look at what you've become. Face it, Alice. You're not a human anymore. You're a monster. Let's eat like a monster. Uh, I, um... And as she's taking, like, a bated breath, she is really digging in. Mm. To find... 
a reason to argue the beast. And as she does, she's clutching on to the throwing her hands into her sweater and clutching onto the fabric and running her fingers through the little knits. And almost almost like using it as a prayer beads to like um how to word this to like um calm herself down gotcha with e each loop sliding across her fingers she is desperately clasping onto great memories of humanity and good things and goodness and puppies and kittens and cute dimples on the cheeks of people who smile, just anything that reminds her why good things must prevail. Mm. Zeta, it's time to make another drive roll. Okay. <laughs> I know, you didn't think you'd be doing so much driving in this game. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> if I knew, I would have put points in it. <laughs> that is... Maybe you'll learn now. Dexterity drive. At least your dexterity is legit. Yeah, I have got two successes. Okay. It's stressful. The back seat is your friend staked through the heart? Not moving, not saying anything. There is a kindred that you've never met, that your beast is wanting to have you eat so much. And then next to you is Alice, shaken, suddenly not looking like herself. But you do manage to pull out and start driving. Start driving to where you were told. Raul doesn't say anything during the drive. Just looks out the window, surveying the landscape. Lots of concrete buildings. The four. The eighty. Numbers assigned to streets and freeways. Heading into Pleasant Hill, you get off on Monument. Start heading toward the plaza. You suddenly realize, Zeta, you've been here before. About a year ago. And you're not too far away from the college where you took your courses. A few miles down the road is a university, one that you know well. You do notice Alice. Something has come over her, but you can't place what it is. As
as you pull do up. I, oh, you want to do something? Do I see Alice like grabbing her clothes real tight? Yeah. Uh, I reach over with my hand and grab her hand and squeeze it. Oh. Alice looks up, a little surprised, and says, Zeta, what's your favorite memory? That gotta be... My dog just full speed running over open acres. I do like dogs. <laughs> what about you? I um I can't remember um right now. I'll I'll get back to you though. From the back seat, you hear. Remembering doesn't get much easier. But it's important. I ask myself about my late wife. Even in the times that I could have done something to have her here with me, I didn't want her to live the life that I did. A predator in the night. Reduced to an existence of feeding on those who I used to be. Alice uh, kind of snaps yeah. to look back and is like, Wait, so you... How, how long ago was... Oh, you had a wife? Yes. It was a long time ago. Had she asked me, I would have embraced her. But she never did. So I have to tell myself that she didn't want this. And maybe that's so, good. So did you... Did she know? She How knew. How that work? Hmm. I will always cherish the memories of her. And in that way, as long as I am immortal, so she will be too. Hearing, hearing about everyone else's uh, things makes it a little bit easier for Alice to for sure. remember, especially like giving more character to this delicious man's in the back seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Zeta? Mm -hmm. You arrive where you are supposed to. 
a house in a neighborhood. But there's something about this house. Something familiar. And for that, I'd like you to roll Good. intelligence and uh -huh. awareness. Okay. Also, real quick, a uh, storyteller. Yeah. The fact that this is still the same session, that means that my heightened senses and since the unseen is still active, yes? Yep. Very cool. Um, Thanks. I have a bestial failure. Ooh. <laughs> Do you want to re-roll with willpower? Yes, I would like to. <laughs> Get rid of one of your willpowers and re-roll. <laughs> uh, minus one dice, though. Uh, lose a willpower. Yes. You are rolling... Your intelligence awareness roll is four, yes? Yes. Then you can only roll three. Okay. That is three successes. <laughs> there you go. Does hey, uh, yeah. Latai still take away one success? Or not? Does it still say one on it? No. Don't worry okay. about that. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. You get there, and the house next to it you've been in before belongs to someone that you knew someone that you uh, took a course with in this neighborhood someone who used to be in your life not anymore really but it's interesting to be housing a vampire in a neighborhood that you have visited. Sure is. You can see on the porch of the house that you're taking this individual to, there is someone on the porch currently smoking a cigarette. If it hadn't been for the light of the cigarette, you wouldn't know that anyone was standing there at all. Alice, with your heightened senses, you can hear that he says the figure under his breath. <sighs> About damn time. Hey. <laughs> Do I recognize? Roll... Uh, intelligence and awareness on the voice. Your intelligence and awareness is better. Yeah, just a second. <laughs> yeah, 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 hold on. How many is that? Hold on. Oh my god. I'm trying to get rid of dice. Come on. <laughs> Don't forget how many hunger dice you're rolling as well. Yeah, I. <laughs> how could I? <laughs> hmm. All right, so that is ooh, that is five successes. Hell nice. fucking yeah! Hell yeah! Just Not today, Satan. Just from that breath, just from that tone. You know mm. that it is... You've seen this individual before. They were admitting people into the Bruja party with a clipboard. Ah. Uh, I see. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I turn to Zeta excitedly. <gasps> it's the clipboard boy. The Hello? Clipboard the boy? Yeah, from the party. The guy who was the like party. Am I a tasty to you? <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> it's him. Huh. Yeah. Probably better that they didn't put a vampire kindred here to greet our guest. Yeah. For multiple reasons, no? Yeah. And she looks very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Raoul says, sorry, are we getting out? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. And she swings the door open and prances to the boy. Good board boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... He comes out of the shadow, throws his cigarette on the ground, and stomps it out. And then uh, his demeanor from the original, about time they showed up, changes into a, ah, yes, hello. Um, I am here to uh, uh, meet you and to escort the package into its new location. <laughs> yeah. Alice laughs. Yeah. Well, well, have you been? H how, how have I been? Yeah, how, how's life? Uh... It's good, I guess. Ah, oh, bummer. Um... I mean, you know, we've traveled quite a while. Do you happen to have a little snack for us? Yeah, I have Prepared. been designated to say that, uh, yeah. He pulls out this, uh, crumpled note and reads it and <laughs> says, uh, they're probably very, very hungry. <laughs> offer yourself but tell them that I still like to play with you so don't drain me and then he puts the note back in his pocket and gives like a half smile to you mm -hmm. <laughs> she looks back at Zeta a little bit like like apologetically like don't mind. Um, I'm quite famished. Go ahead. Don't. Turn my back to them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, you want to take a bite? Mm -hmm. Yup. He, uh, and... holds out his, uh, wrists but is also kind of like it doesn't matter where you bite but wherever works good for you she will gently take the wrist and thanks him in advance like mm, yes um just really fast though um Remember when you said that you were really, really sad in the past? Yeah. Um. Just think of it as this is me taking all of that sadness away, yes? Uh. Okay. You know how you said that life had no meaning and yeah that. yeah 
everything was terrible and there was no hope for a better future. Yeah. But this, I tell you, you are serving for a greater purpose and, uh, you know, there's always people and kindred that you can help with your actions and your self. And she gently places her um, mouth on his wrist to take a, a munch. This blood flows right in. You can taste it. He's actually, even though he said that he's been good, that was, that was a lie. He's actually been mm. going through a bit of an existential crisis recently. Mm. He's suddenly starting to realize that he's small, mm. small compared to what else is out there vampires the countess had told him that werewolves exist too <laughs> and that Poor man. drove him over <laughs> into a feeling of ignorance and he doesn't really know anything about the world that maybe he never did maybe he never will hmm Kindred will live on. The werewolves. I don't know. What other things are there? What other monsters? What other immortal beings? Is God real? Is there a hell? All these things that he was so sure that science had an answer for, and now all of them gone as his blood is taken by something that he didn't even think was real. By something that he had dismissed as just a pop culture creature created on the backs of folklore and superstition. He's been scared. And he hasn't been able to get much sleep. But... At least he gets to help the people who he thinks does matter. Like you. How many dots do you want to take away? Well... Hmm. One dot is fairly easy, right? One dot you can just do. Yeah. Yeah. At least one dot. At um, least. Do you want to take more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. And a human has three dots altogether, right? Uh, yes. Hmm. Essentially. Because, like, I'm not gonna go all three, but I'm considering... Wait, Zeta's hunger hasn't gone up as far as I know. I'm at hunger one. Yeah. yeah. Zeta is disciplined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then again, <laughs> Lilith is unconscious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how that works. Hum 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 hum. Okay. Hypothetically speaking, if I were to want another dot away, uh if you want how to How hard would that be? Yeah. You just gotta roll your willpower. 
Okay, okay. Which is nice. If you fuck up, your uh, beast takes more. Mm hmm. Hmm. So, in theory, can I let go now and consider it in the future? Yeah. You can let go and just take one? Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right. Can I. Um... Alice would like to help this individual to feel a little bit better about his situation with the sleeping and stuff. Sure. Uh, I could probably do a little bit of dominating. Yeah. I would imagine. Could probably uh, mesmerize the boy. <laughs> yeah. I could speed run his uh, psychology yeah, therapy. Yeah, you could. You know? <laughs> yeah. With all my knowledge on psychology, um, I'm gonna. Alice is gonna dig into her like knowledge about feeling inadequate and you know existential crisis and stuff like that. Um, She would like to mesmerize, but also, uh, I think she can rationalize as well. Yeah. So that he doesn't think that he was mesmerized. He thinks he mm -hmm. just came up with his own solution for his feelings, kind of. Like, yeah. he just kind of learned. Yep, yep. So, like, the best kind of therapy that he could ever get. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vampire too. Therapist. Yeah. Um, she's gonna tell him that, you know, clipboard boy. Um, yeah. While one life, regardless of whose life it is, may be insignificant, it's the life that you weave with your community, with your surroundings, that gives it the weight and the meaning that you seek. You will feel incredibly connected and happy and fulfilled when you are interacting with your community around you who has your back and you have theirs. Roll your dice for your discipline. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how does that work? Just the, uh, the dots that you have for dominate. Oh, okay. Got it. Oh, one success. That's fine. That's all you need. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And then roll your hunger dice. Yep. Uh, nothing. Okay. Nothing. Which is great. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> so. This is in a bit of a euphoric place right now. Having this mm -hmm. blood drained. And it's just. I'm glad I could help. She lifts her head hand and like pats him in the head a little bit like oh, there there good good job and like kind of does a weird little prancy floaty walk back to the rest of them so what's the plan here 
well, I think that this individual is supposed to have my keys. And Your keys? the man comes over and goes, ah, oh, yeah. Keys, keys, yeah. I got them in my pocket. Uh, and Clipboard Boy, as you have named him, mm-hmm. um, Robert is his name. Case, yes. Uh, he, he pulls out keys, a ring of keys, and they, they drop and fall on the ground, and he picks them back up and hands them over and says, yeah, you must be uh, the, 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 the package. This house is yours. Um, courtesy of... Uh... And he kind of looks over to Zeta and Alice to see if he's getting the name right. The mm-hmm. Ventru? Is that right? The Ventru? The Ventru? Yeah. That is a clan. Yeah. Like the whole clan? Alice looks I, a bit. I guess like so. Her? They they gave you this house. They also <laughs> wanted me to give you this business card. To which you both recognize the business card of that one guy who was gave it to you at the party. <laughs> oh yes. Mm-hmm. That Ventry. <laughs> ah yes. He goes very well. Raoul takes the keys and he goes to walk to the house and as he's going he says I believe that this is my stop but I believe that you all have business to attend to and gestures to the back seat of the car where Lilith is yes but of course um you know. Oh, do you use uh, mobile phones? Perhaps. Um, Robert goes, I, I've, I've got a phone. Um, you need well, to get in touch okay. with someone? Oh, I mean, yeah. um, and she looks at the, the package, if you will. No, do you use the mobile phones? Would you like to get any of our, if you need anything? We're around, you know, you see. I was told that if I use a phone, a certain Nosferatu will know Ah, and see. Right, of course. Uh, Here, here, she she takes out um, one of her own little like she takes out her notebook and scribbles on her address real fast. Alright. There we go. Snail mail should arrive. Alright. If you need to contact me, obviously a little bit, you know, Oh. Takes it a little bit slower, but comes a bit slower, mm-hmm. but you know. No, at all. You could use a landline if you need something from us. I know the drill. Ah, oh, yes, that too. Uh, may I have your notepad? Alice? Oh, yes, yes. She and hands I, it over. I write my phone number down and give the note to Raoul. He takes these notes. He says, Pleasure to meet you, Zeta. Pleasure to meet you, Alice. Thank you for telling me about your past. I appreciate it. You are a very interesting Malkavian, as everyone in your clan is. Oh, there, there. Listen. Save it for next time. Listen, I appreciate you, and I appreciate what you have done today. And Zeta, the beast, is as much your enemy as it is your ally. As a gangrel, you will come to understand. Farewell. Thank you. Farewell. Meanwhile, Robert looks in the car and goes, Oh, shit! That stake through the heart shit actually works? I mean, yes. However, um, it is as temporary as it is steak. 
if you will. So she's not really dead? Well, we're all already dead, aren't we? And she looks around like kind of. A chill takes over him when he realizes <laughs> <laughs> what you're saying is technically true. <laughs> Uh, I, Thank I, you, Robert, I, though. I, 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 I've got you a, are. I've got a, I've got a, and he just pulls we out are, his phone yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, just goes, just calls some number and you just hear somebody on the phone, uh, just going, um, I don't want any telemarketers calling me right now. And he goes, Sam, it's me. I need help. I'm at the address, please. And then he just hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> ah, I think that is proof. Um, that just st stick to snail mail, sir. <laughs> As she looks at the package again, he is walking away and going to his new home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Robert's like, uh, so, uh, I assume that Sam is going to be here soon. Maybe, maybe someone else. I don't know. Um, but I know that Sam is around, so it shouldn't take him too long to get here. Uh, mm -hmm. he said that he would be nearby. So mm -hmm. the best thing to do is for us to be calm, for us to, for us to relax a little bit and... <laughs> and uh, right when the door closes for um, the salubri to go in mm -hmm. um, he he jolts and like bumps into one and he goes ah! God oh I hope I don't get blamed for this I hope I don't get blamed for this there is there is a vampire with a stake through its heart nearby and there's no one else but me. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. She gently places her hand onto Robert's shoulder and just gives the little weak like how you would like scratch a little puppy just a little just a little wavy scratch like a little gentle pat there there you'll be alright you've been such a enormous help for your friends already I'm just scared. And then Robert stands up straight and his head raises up to it from a chin like mm. and he gets scared and Sam appears behind him with a knife to his throat and goes, you should be. <laughs> and then he just <laughs> lets uh, Robert go and Robert like collapses on the ground and oh no uh, and Sam goes <laughs> puts the knife away and goes what's up here there's problems looks like the package got there safe <laughs> yeah, oh, the package look what got you've you done. safe but someone else did not get you safe <laughs> Yeah, Sam, what did you do? Lilith. Yeah. Looks in and goes. Yeah, do we have a. Was this planned? The what did we do? What happened? Well, Sam, there's always a price for knowledge, isn't there? I'm sure we have something to trade. He looks over to you with the most <laughs> disappointed look. <laughs> That his snake <laughs> face can possibly get. <laughs> and just goes, really? 
Wow. She looks at Zeta with like a devious smile. <laughs> I mean, there, I'm sure we have something we would like to know. Who the fuck right? do you think you're talking to, Alice? She looks back at him like, well, I know I'm looking at a wonderful businessman. What happened? Hmm. She looks at Zeta. Well, I guess this is your call. Well, you see. There was a sabbat. Who wanted to eat the package? And Lilith wanted to stay neutral. That's about it. So, if we brought Lilith out of Torpor, which it looks like she's in right now, mm -hmm. she'd confirm this? Yeah. I'm sure. All right. Have you known me to lie, Sam? Not yet. He pulls out uh, and basically a uh, like walkie-talkie from like 40 years ago mm -hmm. and it has uh, a mounted plug into uh, the wall on it or into the, uh, into the side of it and that is going to a Blackberry keyboard that has been taken off of an older phone he starts typing on that The walkie-talkie well, makes a little bit of a strange uh, static sound. And he listens to it. Can I tell if it's a form of communication I would know? Yeah, do uh, intelligence technology. Uh, that's a three. Okay. Right now. Yeah, let's try. Oh, yeah, you can also try. Okay. One success. <laughs> okay. Zeta, you have no idea what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alice, it looks like uh, Sam is trying to communicate on an old SATCOM system <laughs> and is basically sending a typed message that gets encrypted on its way out uh, mm -hmm. into um, basically into the satellite from the phone and then the walkie-talkie will interpret the message back as a uh, probably what Sam is waiting for, which is mm -hmm. probably a Morse code version of what to do about this. If there is a Morse code, mm -hmm. can I decipher it? Yeah. That I hear through. Yeah, okay. Um... For Morse code, yeah, I'll let I'll let it stand. Uh, intelligence technology, you'd be able to yeah, understand it. The three, yeah. Okay. 
Nice. And indeed, a Morse code does come. Zeta, you just Ooh. hear uh, beeps and boops. Um, and Alice, um, you just hear a response that says, uh, Walnut and a mirror. <laughs> and the message stops. <laughs> Sam uh, puts the equipment away in his coat that you now notice just has a whole bunch of apparently looking broken radio shit in it. Nice. And he goes, All right, we got to go to Walnut Creek. Hmm. We're gonna take Zeta with us. I mean, the Lilith with us. Zeta, you're driving. Okay. I was just about to ask. You don't drive, do you, Sam? I drive. It's just a little awkward when I get pulled over and there's no one behind the wheel. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you could always get one of these fancy futuristic cars that drive themselves. And, you know... Ah. They would have it. I've seen the nudes of that guy who made these things fucking send. It's gross. <laughs> oh. There sure is great tragedy. tragedy in knowing everything, isn't there? You're telling me. All right. Do you want to come along, Alice? You technically don't have to. She looks at Zitta and looks at Lilith. You know what? I will keep following my friend. I would like to see how this episode All right. uh, ends up. Zetta, ever met Tremere before? I don't believe so. I didn't think you did. This will be a first time. Uh, they're not, like, listen, take what I have to say with a grain of salt. I don't exactly like them, but they know a whole bunch of shit that we don't. They have a beast inside of them. They drink blood. They're kindred. Yay. But, uh, that's whatever. They're weird. Anyways, we need to- Who is it. not weird? Who is not weird? Me. Can't you tell? <laughs> yeah, at least of course. With the exception of you. Uh, I don't know. The Bruja seem to know what's going on. <laughs> they throw great parties. That is true. They do. Alright, so back in the car, it is time for another dexterity drive roll. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Okay. <laughs> that is five successes with two oh tens in there. There you <laughs> go. Zeta's learning to drive. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Alright, so Walnut Creek, <laughs> we go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Alright. Sam is giving directions while he is using his equipment behind. Uh, Alice, codes continue to come in, and you can hear uh, another one. Mm -hmm. This one says, um, Tenorio, 
there. And Sam just goes, mm. ah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. She just chuckles at Sam's reaction. <laughs> Sam, you all right there? I hope I'll be all right. Oh, something the matter. Nah, you'll all find out. And another code. And this says, um, confirmed Cass hmm. SF. Ass, ass, ass. Hey, did that fucking Toreador from the Camarilla show up? I don't know the clan, but there was a Camarilla there. Alice, do you think that they were a Toreador? Most likely. Yeah. He types in another code. <laughs> this code says Tell Alice Sire there. Mm. Oh, uh, Alice, your sire's gonna yes. be there. Oh, wonderful. You know, they've been so busy with their hobby. It's nice to get to know, see them again. Yeah, I, I remember when the, uh, uh, What do they call it? The Atari? Yeah, when those Ataris came out, those were real big. Mm -hmm. they, I mean... Have you tried playing video games lately, Sam? I have. Uh, I actually... Oh, yes? Uh, what did you play? Well... Nothing too important or anything. Just, uh... I think it was called, uh, uh, Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me think about that. You can tell that Sam is being dodgy right now. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if you wanted, you could uh, use um, wits and insight to see what he has to hide. Oh, yeah. I would like to, yes. There you go. Oh, I need to add a few dice here. Let's see. I got oof. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> six successes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you recall that at one point it was very hard to get a hold of Sam. And he was kind of a nobody mm -hmm. in the Anarchs. But when uh, things went a little more serious and the Sabbat started being a bigger presence in the bay Sam rose up in rank 
and most, uh, powerful members of the Anarchs, one of the most talked to and recognized. But before that, Sam basically just played video games. Mm-hmm. Most likely, Sam is hiding how big of a gamer he is. <laughs> mm. You know, Sam, I, uh, I remember the Dracula. There's so many Dracula games, you know? There's, uh... There's the one... On the... That wasn't Sega, at, was it? 1986, was it? And then there was the... 1993, we had a few of them for different consoles. And then there was the 2000 Draculas. Plural, I said I that I think right. that you've been uh, talking to your sire a bit too much. This sounds like things that she would know. Yes, but you said you played but it. I was no? playing the one that came out in 1990. 1990? Ah. 1990. What was the title of that one again? I forget. Full title. Dracula for DOS. It was oh. just Dracula. Uh, and then uh, he starts uh, searching on his <laughs> phone, um, looking for something. He just goes, uh, let me. Just check this for you. Um, make sure that uh, everything is good here. Uh, Realms of Dracula, I guess, was what it was called. Yeah, for DOS See? and I thought it had a longer DOS name. Box. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. They never just have like one word names anymore or even you know it's all the all the words are used up by games well no because after uh like it was being used frequently by konami in their series in castlevania and everything the people had to start distinguishing things is what i've heard from alice your sire. alice looks really 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 happy with herself like she's having like <laughs> the biggest shit eating smirk <laughs> on her face as she's looking forward. Like fucking gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zeta, your driving is perfect. <laughs> and um you arrive at this uh small house one story house on the street and it is kind of hidden in the back from a bunch of trees that are forming a sort of canopy above the house you can barely see the front door from where it's at between the sort of uh, cobblestone trail that leads up to the door it looks so fancy until you get to the house which is just basically uh, mortar and brick. It's like, this is the place. Oh. Uh, I'll go first. And we take Sam gets together? out. It's like, hold on. Just wait. He gets out okay. and uh, puts his hood on and walks down the path and goes to the front door and he knocks the door opens 
light comes out. A head peers around the corner. This person looks tall. A little lanky. Has uh, black hair. Black goatee. And has a lovely brown tone of skin. Has these brown eyes that you can see from the doorway. And when he steps out, you can see that he's wearing a regal outfit. Something that you would expect to be worn by a royal family 400 years ago or something. He says something to Sam. Alice, you suddenly become aware that you can't hear it. Oh. But you should be able to. Mm. Sam walks back. The man goes inside. Sam goes, All right. Alice lowers the window bit. a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, well. We're gonna wait. Since you have bit. some time to kill. What? Well, I just I was holding my breath, you know, waiting for you to come back. But now that we have some time to go, let's start to play game. <laughs> what? I, well, we were talking about games uh, with every Sam. Once in a while. Every once in a while, I, I don't... I'm not really a gamer or whatever. Sam, it's really important to have things as hobbies, as someone of our type. You know, they ground you and they... They they make life not all politics and, and survival. I think it's very good that we teach Zeta this early as well. I think that Zeta should probably stick with trying to be the best gang girl that they can be. Yeah, but you don't know, need to I don't know, bird watching or games. Yeah, but you know, to each their own bird watching I'm or sure telling Zeta apart knows mushrooms. A lot about bird watching. <laughs> <laughs> she chuckled. No. I, that I actually know more about video games than bird watching. <gasps> oh, <laughs> there we go. Tell us, tell us, tell us everything. Well, when I was alive, I used to have a very high-end gaming piece, computer, oh. and was playing a lot of new releases and, mm. but lately I've been sticking more to my switch and playing Animal Crossing <laughs> oh my <laughs> she looks <laughs> Alice looks way too happy at this revelation <laughs> Sam and she looks at uh, looks Sam street and uh mm-hmm mm-hmm Go ahead. Yeah, well, basically. See? Oh, we all have something in common. Isn't that great? Uh, speaking of you all having something in common. And walking down the street is a familiar figure to you, Alice. Mm? It is Mabel Sparrow. She's walking down the street. 
eyes looking down at her phone. Mm -hmm. You can tell from the movement that she is playing Pokemon Go. Hell yeah. Alice swings open the door. And prances over to her. And she is, she is just, instead of, she's like not saying hello, but then immediately like, Hello, Will. What did you catch? What's new? Mabel, who has, um, lovely brown hair, worn down at the sides. She is, uh, still wearing, uh, her robe. And she has pink slippers on. <laughs> and is wearing uh, her glasses. And she just goes, give me a second. Mm -hmm. She turns the phone over to you and just goes, uh, I missed. Oh no, I'm sorry. Was she doing the spinny the, uh, app? Yeah. Was yeah. she doing the spinny throws instead of the straight throws? Yeah, of course. <laughs> she puts the phone in her uh, pocket and just goes, Alice. Mabel. I assume that the kindred in the back of that car is not of your doing, is it? Of course not. I wouldn't have the strength in my fingers. She, like, shows her hands that are clean <laughs> from everything, I think. She grabs one of your hands. She traces a finger along one of your fingers. Mm -hmm. You always did have such nice hands. You always had something about you that demonstrated that you were always powerful, yet elegant, Alice. That is some high praise coming from you. And she looks at me. Her with like a warm beaming smile she looks back at you and goes hmm you have not been coming to my raids she looks around the car as much as she can without releasing her hands and well I've been making some new friends in real life you know how I need my um what is it called again um enrichment yes I need my enrichment <laughs> there are those that we can talk to we can play with and feel no hunger. And then there's the blood sacks that walk amongst us. And every time I see them, they remind me of a masquerade that we are to uphold. If I find out that one of you is responsible for staking a potential incredibly important political ally, I will kill that person. Who's your friend? So I get out of the car. Lean against the door, by the way. Ah, you again. I wondered when I would see you. What is your name? Zeta. 
It's nice to see you again. Mm. You've met? She lets go of your hand, Alice, mm -hmm. and starts walking over to Zeta. We did meet when we met. Mandy had tried to conceal this fledgling from me. <laughs> Why would you do I that? I told Mandy, well, from what I hear, Zeta here was a bit of an accident. Alex is just looking around unexpectedly, waiting for anyone to break the silence. <laughs> Sam uh, looks down the street and goes, uh, Here he comes. And, of course, the Dodge Charger with the anarchy symbols on it pulls up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and out comes Tenorio in his usual vest promoting all sorts of harm against the Camarilla, though to a mortal, they wouldn't know what the hell the vest patches are talking about. Mm -hmm. Mabel just says, do you think you were an accident, Zeta? Well, me being turned definitely was an accident, but I think it turned out to be a happy little accident. <laughs> Alice, I'm glad that beams. you find happiness in this life. Mabel turns back to you, Alice, and says. But while looking at you, speaking to Zeta, I picked out Alice. Alice didn't really know me as much as I knew Alice. And I knew what a great kindred she would make. You flatter me, Mabel. She says and looks a little bit like uneasy with the praise. Mm hmm. Tenorio at this point walks up and says what happened between friends she asked us to do this to her I want you to understand what I'm going to say to you Alice is not out of a dislike for you. Mm -hmm. It is out of a distrust for your beast. I do not want to hear what a Malkavian has to say about what happened. Zeta, tell me what happened. Well, yeah, she did ask us to stake her. To... Why? Keep... There was... We met at the store where 
the package hit and then there was another there was a sabbat also and I talked with him and when she came back she wanted to be staked to keep the neutrality who was the sabbat Do I know the name? You do not. Uh, I don't know the name, but he was a gangrel. I want you to understand something. But first, I will ask, is it you that put a stake in the Lilit? Yes, after she asked me. Then understand this. You have admitted to attacking another kindred. If the Lilith story does not confirm yours, there will be disciplinary action. Do you understand that, Zeta? Yes. Well, it's good that she will confirm it. Good. <sighs> Mabel, thank you for coming. This happened... Not in your jurisdiction, exactly. But your child was involved. And we can't get a hold of Stevie right now. To which Mabel replies, I mean, no one ever wants to get a hold of Stevie. <laughs> Tenorio reaches into the car and just picks up the Lilith with one hand and with one arm is just carrying her inside and beckons all of you to follow closely. I follow. Yeah. Once you get inside, you see that the inside of this place is basically just one kind of sacred, big, like, altar kind of thing. The main living room has been converted into some sort of holy place or something where rituals happen, but also science occurs. There are... Uh, there is what looks like one altar that has a chemistry set on it and on the other one with religious artifacts and on the other are piles of books that have no title on them. They look more like journals. Otherwise, the kitchen looks like a normal kitchen and starkly trot, uh, starkly uh, just looks so vivid of a change against what everything else contrasts is the word I was looking for. Um, and then there's a bedroom or two down a hall, an ordinary house with nothing ordinary in it until you get to the kitchen. In the center has been brought in a folding table that has been put out and on the other side of that table is the man you saw in the doorway. He motions for Lilith to be set upon it.
Tenorio does so. The man first goes over to Alice and says, Hi, I'm a Tremere. You can call me Amir. Please don't make jokes about Amir the Tremere. Understood. Pleasure is all mine. Nice to meet you. He uh, reaches out for a handshake. She reaches out to meet it. Solidly looks into your eyes. Shoots a look of respect. Mm -hmm. But that's all you get from it. She returns a courteous uh, nod and a slow blink. He lets go and then goes over to Zeta. Hello. I am Amir. Amir, and I am a Tremere. Please do not joke about the rhyme. I'm giggling a bit. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. It goes to shake your hand as well. I give my hand. He raises an eyebrow and says, This year. How long ago? How long ago what? So you first wanted to drink blood. How long ago uh. since you died? About three months. Hmm. I see. He lets go of your hand. And then says to everyone, Hello. You came to me because you needed me to bring a kindred out of torpor. It is this one here. Our emissary between the factions. Ex Sabat the Lilith. I am going to bring Lilith out of torpor. Someone here is going to have to give their blood to do it. Who will it be? And both uh, Mabel and Tenorio raise their hands. Tenorio goes, If there will be a blood bond, it will be with me. To which Mabel goes, In my jurisdiction, Tenorio. Then I will ask your child, or... Alice. Yes, Do Tenorio. you trust... Do you trust the Lilith in the custody of your sire? Or with the one who will guide her into more 
missions appropriate for her talent. Mabel's like, you can word it however you want. I have the right. Hmm. They're both staring at you in a very uncomfortable way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so based on my insight and knowledge on Mabel, do I think she would let Lilith stay as neutral as she has been. Most likely, Mabel would uh, have you or have Lilith like uh, she had you in the mm -hmm. earliest time. Basically, just someone to make her happy. Mm -hmm. Someone to have around and someone to do her bidding. Mm -hmm. Not in a mean way, but in a yeah. playful way. Yeah. And based on my knowledge on Tenorio. Tenorio's all business. He... Yeah. Hmm. Now, based on my knowledge on Lilith. Lilith does Lilith? call Tenorio daddy. Yeah. But, uh, I, yeah. Also, but also, how much would Lilith care to be doing whatever Tenorio wants her to do? Yeah. Exactly. Man, if there only was a third party who would also be like, like Lilith, just like unbound. <laughs> because me, personally, the player, Jay, I like Lilith being like a bit of a wild card. <laughs> hmm. Right now, Sam is like, um, uh, like sitting in a corner with his like arms folded, looking mm -hmm. like. Why is this happening? Why aren't we just doing something right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, you can tell from Alex's, Alice's expression that she's like very deep in thought, wondering about this. Well. What Lilith values most in her life is her. Well, her position of no position. However, I also did see pain in her about not belonging. And I do think that she does most agree with the anarchist values. So I am happy that it is an anarch that she shall be bound to. But Tenorio, I ask you this. Would you let her be her bit of a wild card self if she was bound to you? Or would you take that from her? I would change nothing about who she is. I would just make her be the anarch she was destined to be. Hmm. What about you, Mabel? What kind of future would you see for Lilith? Alice. My birds, they chirp, they sing, they cry. All for love, company, an eagerness to see more, a 
and yet to see less. It is experience that brings them to me, to want to be mine. All they need is a little coaxing. Alice looks like she wants to facepalm herself so hard and it is taking uh -huh. every single fiber of her being to <laughs> appear courteous and mm -hmm. and you know very <laughs> you know very just oh <sighs> Uh, before you say anything, mm -hmm. your beast is going to whisper to you. Yep. Perhaps there could be some kind of a compromise. I say, we have her drink Sam's blood. Wouldn't that be funny? She just looks to the side. No, don't say that. I was thinking that. Oh, <laughs> that would be something, wouldn't it? I know you were thinking it. <laughs> don't say that. That's silly. <laughs> Once again, you know everyone me so can just well. see Alice openly talking <laughs> with, uh, with the beast. Nothing. But you don't hear the beast's side of the conversation. Ah. <laughs> oh. Goodness. Alice looks at Zeta and says no actually no she just looks at Zeta real fast and then looks at Sam in the corner like Sam you didn't oh, happen to raise your invisible arm did you? Ugh, bummer. I could also give <sighs> my blood. No, you cannot. I could... Why not? I'm waiting to hear from Lilith whether or not you are as responsible as some might uh, think. Yes. A blood bond to you could jeopardize her testimony. True. That is true. And I don't suppose I could give my blood as either. Or could I? Is Was that an option? <sighs> Mabel goes an option. Probably not as good as ours, though. Tenorio doesn't say anything. Mm hmm. Because Tenorio recognizes that this is Amir's house. Mm hmm. And this is Mabel's uh, jurisdiction. Mm hmm. So he cannot tell you no. Yeah. He can only say no to Zeta because mm -hmm. he's the sheriff. And what concerns Zeta and Lilith is a matter of the Anarch Law. Mm hmm. So, also, Amir, I, I, uh, I kind of, yeah, like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, Amir just quickly says, I don't care who it's going to be, just let it be somebody. Emir, I'm sure you understand. These are big decisions. They're not to be taken lightly. Life alter, death altering decisions. I didn't join the Anarchs for politics. I joined the Anarchs to help. And I'm here to help. That's what I'm here for. Um. Also, did I understand that correctly? That, like, basically Mabel said that 
Mabel would prefer it to be hers, but she didn't outright say no. Yes. Okay. Because the thing is, Alice doesn't trust either the of these is motherfuckers. That you would like to be bound to you. <laughs> yeah, no, the thing is, I, Alice does not trust, with all due respect to both of these kindred, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not gonna let Lilith be who Lilith wants to be. And Alice thinks she would. Out of these two options. She wouldn't want to have a blood bond necessarily because it would just complicate everything and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't like the idea of like having someone having to control someone. But maybe that's what's going to make her the best choice. Hmm. She's going to step forward and look at Tenorio and say, Tenorio, this is in no way my distaste in you as a person or your ambitions. I hope you understand that. And she looks at Mabel and says, you know I adore you. And she steps forward one more step and says, I'll do it. I'll offer my blood for her. Mabel looks surprised. And so does Tenorio. Sam uh, unfolds his arms and leans forward like drama is going to happen. And Amir just goes, good, get over here. <laughs> and uh, where he has directed you to be is around uh, Zeta so Amir just kind of like moves Zeta a bit out of the way and is like come mm -hmm. on <laughs> I give them the wound she waits you. for a final like any kind of acknowledgement from either and both of the others who for some reason made this her call <laughs> Tenorio looks like he wants to say something but Mabel is uh, like folds her arms and has this sort of look on her face of <laughs> I want to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she does. Mm, very mm -hmm. good. Yep. Amir just goes, hold out your arm over her mouth. She does so. Hey, hey you, uh, Zeta, go stand there with the others. Okay. I go over to the Alex. Sam, go stand in the hall. Right. <laughs> Sam gets up and draws a knife. And stands in the hall. Now... I'm going to bring Lilith out of Torpor. Mm -hmm. When this happens, then she's going to wake up and we don't know how she'll react. But we have to contain her. We cannot have her run out into the streets. Sam is going to get to the hall. Otherwise, all of you will stop her from going that way. Alice and Amir pulls out a knife 
Mm-hmm. And holds it to your arm and goes, going to spill your blood? Be wary that the other kindred don't lose control. Your blood is for the Lilith. Understand? Yes. Right. With this dagger, with this knife, you feel it cut into your flesh. Blood pours out. It starts falling onto the Lilith's lips. The blade felt cold, colder than you. And you're not used to something cutting into your flesh so easily. You can definitely tell that it was a magical blade that cut you. She does Zeta? not change expression. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need you to roll for your willpower. Okay. Two successes. Your beast talks to you and goes crazy Malkavian blood. I want it real bad. <sighs> Please. But it does not add to your hunger. Just a hungry beast that wants so badly to have you do something for food. Can I just say, like, out of character real fast, Zeta's beast is going through the ringer and has been for, like, <laughs> yeah. a while now. Like, <laughs> Zeta has an iron fist on this beast's throat. <laughs> and it's just squirming and just whimpering for blood. <laughs> mm-hmm. You should probably feed it later. <laughs> I'm just imagining the beast quick, is no, I... no beast, it's like a ferret. <laughs> Real quick, I want a confirmation from uh, Lilith. You are here. Are you here, ready to play? Yep, I'm here, ready to play. Alright, so... The blood falls on Lilith's lips. Alice, you see... The Lilith's eyes open. And Lilith... You still cannot move your body, but you can see what's going on, and you can hear what's going on around you. In one moment, you were in Sun Valley Mall, Zeta driving a stake through your heart, and the next moment you are here, in some home somewhere. Alice, dripping blood into you. And it tastes wonderful. But you need more. You need so much more. The Tremere goes to the stake. Puts his hands on it and says, I'm going to take this out. When I do... Don't know what's going to happen. Everyone ready? Alice nods. I know too. All right. Amir pulls the stake out of you, Lilith. I need you to roll willpower all right okay 
Ticket, 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 ticket. Two critical successes. Well, all of them were success. Nice. <clears throat> you are thirsty for that blood, but you are in full consciousness. You can't help but jerk to reach forward, grab Alice's arm, and start suckling on the blood yourself. But very quickly, you are fully aware of what you're doing and what's happening. And you have full autonomy. Fuck, I forgot how bad that hurts. And she is going to just sit up and just clutch at her chest. Mm. By the way, uh, to Zeta and Alice, the hole mm -hmm. is still there. And yeah. it is still, <laughs> like, very visible. But there's just no stake there currently. It just looks like a big ol' open wound. Lilith currently... You have taken, uh, you should be sitting at, um, seven points of <clears throat> aggravated damage. And Alice, you have, uh, two points of superficial damage done to you from the okay. knife. Once Lilith stops uh, drinking from you, though, the wound is closed, but it leaves a scar. Mm. Lilith, note that you have a blood bond with Alice currently. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> uh, uh, fuck me. Uh, uh, fuck. Uh, she reaches out and puts her hand on Alice. Hun, I don't ever recommend you do that. <laughs> fuck. It's as painful as it looks. I'm just happy to have you back, friend. <clears throat> uh, uh, is, is everyone okay? Did everyone get away? And uh, now that you're up, everything went smoothly. Uh, 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 and, and Zeke... What happened to Zeke? Oh, you mean the, uh... The... Other... Who... Attacked us. Yeah. Or rather, well, not us, but... Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. I... Uh, tell me that he was able to at least see me get staked and... And yes, got away. He ran yeah, he ran away. Ah. And he saw, and saw you. Yes. Me carrying you out. Uh, but he saw me staked, right? Yes. Yes. Said, uh, thank you for that. It's. Uh, it, it, it was. It was. Important that he saw me staked. He had to see me get staked. And he had to be able to get away. 
I thank you for doing what I asked you to do. Alice looks expectedly at the people who were waiting for a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I I go in and clear it. I'm glad you're awake again. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, and will it finally begins to kind of recover a little bit she's obviously in, in a lot of agony and pain um, with all of her aggravated damage and still just recovering from being staked <laughs> she sees she sees daddy and um, <laughs> she sees some weird looking dude and uh somebody playing um on a phone playing a game on a phone and she can <laughs> hear somebody creeping in the hall that she just figures it's got to be sam <laughs> uh so zeta who do i have to tell them that i told you to stake me uh that will be your daddy <laughs> she looks at she looks over and goes I asked her to stake me and and make it seem like she was doing it as an attack so that Zeke the Sabat Gangrel could see and not know that I gave them warning that they were about to be attacked. But still make him think I was showing loyalty to the Sabbat. It's the only way I could think of to maintain neutrality. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm going to lay back down for a minute. Hi, Sam. You can stop hiding. And she just flops back I'm onto hiding. the table. I was just told to be here. <laughs> you didn't have to be an obfuscate. It's good to see you, Sam. And she just like reaches out and like holds hands with Zeta. Tenorio uh, walks forward and says, uh, Zeta, Alice, Amir, give us the room. And Amir just goes, right, it's only my house. I guess I'll just let you come in and tell me what to do in my house. And he uh, goes outside. <laughs> Alice nods fortiously and walks after him. I not to let it and also leave the room. Lilith. have questions. What you did was brave. I am thankful. Uh -oh. 
I, I, I couldn't let the harm come to any of them. Cass, the baby fang Toreador Cami. Not a, not a bad individual. We had to get the package safely delivered. And I knew that if Zeke was able to attack, somebody would have died. But if if I had have told him straight up no, chances are he wouldn't have an emissary between the sex this time next week. I figured why was the Camarilla there? They wanted to try to offer the salubri the same offer that the Anarchs were offering. The salubri ended up t- taking the Anarch's offer, but said that he would at least hear the prince out, but that he would not be moved to the Camarilla side. It was my job to simply be escort for Cass to be there. The only issue was the Salubri's ghoul was not expected to be there. Things went a little sideways at first because, well, I ran into Alice and Cass and I came through one door. Zeta was there with the ghoul and there was a bit of mix up and well, there was a mix up, but it was resolved. Nobody got hurt much. Mostly me. And we met with the Salubri. And... And... The the offers were made by both Hesetta and Cass. And... That was when I was notified that there was a Sabbat hunting the salubri and I was asked to go deal with it sabat to sabat Zeke asked me to help kill the salubri and take his blood along with Zeke his As a show of loyalty. I was still having some loyalty to the Sabbat. So, going back in and taking the time that I had before he was able to work his way around from the other entrance. I told everyone what was happening and why Zeta needed to stake me, and I needed it to be Zeta. Because Andy and I are really good friends. And 
As much as I like Alice, I could not be able to give credit. I didn't know her sire well enough that she would be able to stand by and see what happened. And I couldn't let it be cast because then it could be seen as an overture of war by the Camarilla. So that's why it had to be Zeta. And after that, I woke up here with everyone sitting around me. And I am in a lot of pain right now. In that case, do not talk, but listen. Mabel approaches and says, your friend Zeke is going to die. More than likely, anyways. People saw him transform back from a wolf to the figure of himself. People saw it, and people are talking about it. There are vampire hunters on their way to the bay, and Zeke is the number one thing on their list. Obviously, we will do nothing to save him. Furthermore, we know why the prince wants to talk to the Salubri. We want you to do something for us. After the display that you did, since Cass saw it and we have confirmed that Cass has made it back, to the Camarilla. We hope that you can do something for us and act as a bit of a double agent. Before you say yes or no, let us tell you what you want to do, what we want you to do. We want you to tell the prince that you were staked by the Anarchs and you do not forgive this the Sabbat were able to save you but not before they had killed one of your friends therefore you are angry with the Anarchs you are angry with the Sabbat in this way you will get close enough to the royal court to figure out where they are keeping what they got from Vegas the day the prince sent you and those two Ventru out to the airport. That which was to belong to us. And once you find it, either tell us where it is or bring it back with you. I can do this. I can do this. That is what I had hoped you would say. You have a blood bond with Alice. Do not tell the Malkavian what we have tasked you with. She's she's really weak and she just kind of she just kind of is just barely able to nod her head. Sam, you had something that you wanted to say. Yes. Lilith. I know that what you went through was fucking hard. Frankly, I want to make a message. This is not a message that you have to send. 
just information you can provide me while you are over there. I want you to tell me where Cass's Haven is. Done. Hey, Sam? Good. Yes. When Zeke dies, I know it's going to be at the hands of the Sabbat. Let me know when he dies and who did it. Can you do that for me? I will do my best. Good. If I don't tell you, Mandy will tell you. Thank you. And she looks over at Tenario. I won't lie and say that I don't still have some loyalty to the Sabbat. But I will say, because of the way they let my pack just be slaughtered and did nothing, I want you to know that I do have an axe to grind with some of the leadership of the Bay Area Sabbat. And if this information helps, this information helps put y'all in the position of the strongest power I would like for there to be a leadership change in the Sabbat maybe one with loyalists in charge that are more allied with the Anarchs. But I agree to all terms. Loyalists are the only Sabbat we trust, and there's not very many of them left. Yeah. I know. My entire pack were Loyalists, and that's why we were allowed to die. The mistake was I survived. But I think I can agree to your terms. And if it's okay, I'm gonna pass out now. And she just kind of drops. <laughs> I'm sure that your blood bonded partner would like to speak with you one last time but we will take our leave <coughs> oh, okay Tenorio walks out with a nod <clears throat> and Mabel pulls out her phone and starts gaming as she walks out and gives a little passive wave and uh you can hear sam's footsteps leaving and he just goes i'll have a present for you soon she just weakly blows him a kiss <laughs> Sam walks by uh, Zeta and Alice and uh, Amir and just says, You can go back in now. We're all even. Take care, everyone. 
she says as she turns around to go back to Lilith. Amir just says, um, finally, let back inside my own house. Of course. Glad I have permission. <laughs> oh, Alice snickers poor... at him. <laughs> oh, the poor suffering Tremere. Oh. oh. If only... A storyteller. I also get back inside. I would like to real fast ask a question. Um... Yeah. So since I have heightened senses up, <laughs> did I hear all no, of that? No, you didn't hear anything. Nope. Okay, I didn't hear anything. Nope. Got it. Basically, on the whole house, anything happening, mm -hmm. once you went outside, just complete silence. Like you passed through a something protective over it. Mmm. She gestures at the house and talks to the. Hold on, Vermeer. Was that his name? Amir the Tremir. Amir, yeah, Amir. <laughs> I love what you've done with the place. Could you do that for me? Do what for you? You need your bathroom remodeled. <laughs> no, no, no. The, um, the aura, if you will. Ah, oh, that. Ah. Oh. I'll obviously pay for your time. Pay? Uh, well, uh, uh how much are we talking? I mean, how much are we asking? Uh, you know what? I'll send you an estimate. Thank you. Kindly. Would you like my information, then? Uh, if you'd like to give it. Otherwise, I suppose I could just ask Sam for it. <laughs> She writes it down, rips out her notepad, writes it down. The pen is like attached to the notepad. Mm -hmm. And then uh, tears out the page and gives it to him. There you go. You can contact me either with the phone or with snail mail, whatever your preference. He uh, snaps his fingers. And the note disappears, and he just goes, got it. She gives him a courteous smile and nod, and slow eye glows. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Lilith, when Alice comes back in, uh, you seem, you seem happier. Oh, goodness. Alice is here. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yes. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Alice does a little like she she raises up her hand to almost put onto her forehead as like a face palm and then she holds it back like puts it back puts her hand back with a deep sigh. Lilith. As I am ever happy to see you, um, I do think we need to discuss this all. Yeah, sorry if I don't like get up for you. Oh, you're I'm... you're fine. Um, somebody put a stake in my heart. Ah. <laughs> you asked for it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, the poor suffering gang girl. <laughs> oh, oh, um, stick through the heart. Would okay. you guys like to go back to my, pla my place and uh, wind down a little bit? 
you don't mind if I pass out in, in the car, do you? Because I'm quite certain that if I was trying to drive, th there might be consequences. And she just kind of nods off. Alice just looks at Zeta. Zeta, would you like to drive? Or I can always just, you know, call as a driver, if you will, with a car. I can drive. You sure about that? Look at you becoming <laughs> such a driver. <laughs> you did an excellent job for getting us here, too. I believe in you, Zeta. You got this. Well, thank you. Um... Would you carry her to the car? She gestures towards Lilith, like, I think she's feeling a bit weak. Or would you Lilith, like would to you be mind carried, that? Lilith? Lilith is unconscious, last I checked. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, you can, you can ask Lilith all you want, but she's pretty much <laughs> oh, in non <laughs> Yes, yeah. I will carry Lilith. <laughs> Alice does a little courteous nod to the house's owner again. Thank you for everything you do. Yeah, stop by for a spell. Get it? Spell. I'm funny. I'm a Tremere. <laughs> <laughs> you are funny. Toodaloo. <laughs>